Lord, to come here on a Wednesday night, Lord, to feel your mighty presence, O oh God. Lord, your word is alive, and it is, Lord, is going to minister to us tonight. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Lord, you know the needs of everyone, Lord, those that are here, those that are watching, those that cannot be here or cannot watch. Lord, you know every situation. We pray, Lord, that you'd have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen, amen. 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 All right. Well, let's get into our Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. Together we celebrate. Amen. Together we celebrate. Uh, what am I talking about? We are serving God another year. Yesterday was our 19th anniversary since we started the church in Pompano Beach. Amen. So 19 years, River of Life Church and Pastor Markham, First Lady Markham's anniversary. We started the church and we've been pastoring that long. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, it's not always going to be like that. All right. One day we're going to have somebody else who's going to say, I've been here so many years, but, you know, the church has been here for so many years. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So I want to read tonight, if you would remain standing for the reading of the word. It's kind of a long scripture, so maybe I'll just read the first two verses and you can be seated. Uh, we celebrate together. We are one. We have unity. Even though we are diverse, we have unity. And that's, that's really the way God works. We're diverse, but we're unified. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 31, and I'm just going to read the first two and you can be seated. In the New King James Version, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren and sisteren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you are Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Heavenly Father, help me today, Lord, as we celebrate together 19 years, O oh God, of serving this community, serving your kingdom. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would bless this service, anoint your word, let it be, uh, be fruitful, and let it multiply in someone's life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Good to have each and every one of you here tonight. Amen. I'm going to continue with this scripture in verse 3. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And so we know we are spirit-filled. We've experienced that, so we know what he's talking about, that, that we call him Lord because we have his Spirit. Now, verse 4, there are diversities or different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit, because there's only one God, there's only one Spirit, only one faith, one church, one baptism, and we know that, that He is the only God, but, but there's diversity in, within the body of Christ. Just like in our bodies, we have one body, but we have many different parts and members of our body. Amen. And while I have you here tonight, I, before I get started, I have hearing aids now, so I can really hear the children. So if you could, if they're too loud, if they're distracting other people, please take them out for a moment until they can calm down. Uh, I don't know what it sounds like to everybody else, but up here with hearing aids, it's a little distracting. <laughs> Hallelujah. So don't want to offend anybody, but, you know, just let's think about people around us. All right. So if they get too loud, just kind of take them out for a minute and then bring them back in. Amen. Because we know we love the sound of children. It's the, the sound of growth. And we love hearing them. We're glad they're here, but sometimes they can be a distraction. So verse 5, there are differences of ministries. There's differences of ministries, right? We don't all have the same kind of calling and gifting, but the same Lord. And then verse 6, and there are diversities or differences of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. Why? Why do we receive the Spirit of God? It's to profit all. So whatever God uses us for is to profit the whole body. And so many of us have different gifts and callings and different ministries and different talents and gifts, but it's all to profit the whole body of Christ. Amen? And so verse 8 for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. 
and to another the working of miracles, and to another prophecy, and yet to another a discerning of spirits. And when we have these gifts operating, it's not to say, look at me, look at me. It's for the edifying and the body of Christ to profit everybody. So we need each other. We need different gifts operating. And so when God gives us a discerning spirit, it's not to embarrass someone. It's to be able to know how to minister to them. And so if they have an issue going, God reveals something to you. It's not to make them feel condemned or feel bad, but that you can minister and hopefully pray the right prayer. And so to another, it says the different kinds of tongues and to another to interpret the tongues. So we have this hop, uh, happen often in church where we have a tongues message or a message in tongues loud, and then someone has the gift of interpreting, and they will translate it uh, or interpret it. Uh, <coughs> it's not really a translation. It's, it's really more of an interpretation. It's the gist of what God's saying. And so we, we, we understand these things, and we've had all these working in our, in our church, and it, it's but it's one God who does it all. And then verse 11, but one of the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills, not as we will, but as he wills. And so we go back to we are one, we are unity, we celebrate together. Everything that we do is together because we are one. And then verse 12, it tells us, for as the body is one, but it has many members. And but all the members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. And then verse 13, for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. So that same spirit that you received when you repented of your sins and you got baptized calling on his name, you received the same spirit that I received. It comes from God. It's God's spirit. And whether we're Jews or Greeks, whether we're slaves or free, we all have been made to drink out of that one spirit because there's only one God and he is one spirit. He's omnipresent, yet he can fill the universe. He, he is one, but yet he can, he can go anywhere at any time and fill anyone that he chooses. Verse 14, for in fact, the body is not one member, but many. But we're still, we're one, but we have many parts to it. If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I am not the body? No. If you're, just because you're a hand or you're a foot or you're a nose or your eye doesn't mean you're not part of the body. You're just a different member of the body than other parts. And so we have to understand that within the church, we have different gifts. We have d diverse people with diverse thinking and talents, but they have the same spirit. And they work for the same God. And it was given by the same God. In verse 16, and if, there, if the ear should say, because I am not the eye, am I not part of the body? Is it therefore not the body? No, it's part of the body. It's just not the same part of the body. So if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing? If the whole body was the hearing, where would be the smelling? And so we need each other. We, we celebrate together. Together we celebrate 19 years of what God is doing. It's God's church. We were, you know, we were blessed to be a part of it, but it's his church. And we, we, listen, we support each other and we rejoice together with each other. Now, some of you came in at different times, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, but you're still part of the celebration of what God is doing. And then verse 18, but now God has set the, set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor can the head to the feet, I have no need of you. We need each other. We need what you have to offer. We need what it is that God has gifted you with. We need you because God chose you and filled you with his spirit. So you're just as important to the body as, as the head is to the body. And then it goes on. 
And it says in verse 22, No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. It is necessary. And I'm going to jump a little bit ahead of myself here. How many of you know that if one part of your body hurts, other parts of your body hurt? I have been experiencing this. If, if I have trauma in my arm, somehow my arm feels better than my knees. My knees is part of my body and it's connected. And so if I have trauma in my hand, I'm going to hurt in the knees. <laughs> it, it's all connected. And so that's the way the body of Christ is. When one of you are suffering from something, it affects the whole body. And if there's a weak area in the body, then that affects it even more. So it's important that we understand this, that the Bible says that if one suffers, we all should suffer because we are part of each other. And so that, that brings compassion, right? So in verse 20, it says, but now indeed there are many members, yet one body, and, and I've read that, verse 23, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our unprecedentable parts have greater modesty. In other words, you, you may be more important to the church than the pastor. Somebody who is a, a tither, supporting the church, interceding, praying. I mean, there's things that we don't see sometimes that are probably the, the, the key ingredient to the body being successful. So if you look down, and let's just drop down to verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church. First an apostle, second prophets, third teachers, miracles, somebody who can be used by God to do miracles. Not that they are the miracle worker, but God uses them because of their faith and their obedience to pray for people in tough situations. And then the gifts of healings helps. That is a spiritual, spiritual need in the church. Helps, helps. That is spiritual. Helping in any way that you can helps the church operate. Administration. Not everybody can administrate. That, that's a you gotta be detailed. You gotta you gotta have patience with things. And then there's the varieties of tongues. Now, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles or healings, do all speak in tongues and, and interpret? No, but what he says in the end is, is one of my favorite scriptures, but earnestly desire the best gift. And yet I show you a more excellent way. In other words, I want the gift of whatever the situation calls for. If somebody needs healing, God, use me to have faith to pray that they are healed. If they need a Bible study, Lord, give me the gift of teaching. Lord, if somebody needs encouraged, whatever the situation, I want the best gift to operate at that moment so that they can get what they need. Amen. And it's not for me. It's for the, the perfecting of the saints. It's for the edifying of the body. It's for, it's for the profit of everyone. Now, if one part of the body suffers, I talked about this, then other parts suffer. The chiropractors and the doctors tell you that if you have an injury in one part, it can affect the weak areas, and I have experienced this. I know exactly what they're talking about now. I broke my arm, and my knee started hurting. That did not make sense to me but that, because that was a weak part of my body. Now, the, the sermon tonight is going to emphasize the congregation and the pastors who worked together for 19 years to accomplish God's goal for the church. Today we celebrate together, 19 years. Having served here as pastors for 19 years, some of you have been here with us for 19 years. Some of you have not been here the whole time, but you have joined us because God sent you whenever that time was. And because our journey has not been about us or pastor it's about God and what God is doing and how, who God is trying to reach and what God is trying to build. We are just laborers who are faithful and obedient to try to do what he wants us to do. And so 
we come together, we work together, we labor together, we celebrate together. Anniversaries are kind of funny in a way. Um, if you look through the years, you know, uh, if you look at the presidential um, voting every four years, right? You, you think about it, we've been here almost 20 years, and so we've been reelected five times. Right? Amen. If you look at it from the presidential stance. But there was a famous comedian who asked, you know, Sister Pat, she's going to be celebrating her 19th birthday soon. And I don't usually say you look older for your age. My stepdad, he's going to be celebrating his 19th, and he looks a little old for his age. But there was a comedian who was asked, what would, what would it be like if you were to um, ask people who are 100 years? Um, I would like to, let me say this. If someone's 100 years, you know, they, like, they say, you look pretty good for your age, right? I wonder what people look at the church that's 19. Do we look good for our age or, or do we look old, stressed? The Old Testament, which I'm going to read the scripture here toward the end, in Nehemiah, he kind of addressed that, you, uh, you know, there was a, Jerusalem had been destroyed, it was desolate, it was ruined, it was waste, and it did not look good, and he went there to rebuild, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. The walls of the city were still torn down, and they looked pretty depressing, but God was stirring up Nehemiah's heart, and so he wanted Nehemiah to do something. Have you, have you ever been, you know, praying, fasting and praying, going to church, you feel the, the anointing of God and you just feel God stirring something in you. You're not really quite sure what it is, but you look around and you see distress and you see things that need to be rebuilt or you need, uh, or, or maybe it just needs built and, and God begins to deal with you. You, you. you begin to get a little stirring in your spirit. I, I can tell you that July 26, 1992 in Dallas, Texas, La Prada's La Prada Drive, New Life Tabernacle. When I went in that place the first night, wasn't going to look to have anything happen, but God changed my life. And, and then within 24 hours, God had called me. He told me I was going to be a pastor. The first night, within the first 24 hours, God was already calling me. He was already stirring me up from the first time that he called me. And so we, we see Nehemiah, he's stirred. He's, he's wanting to do something. And when he shared the future of what God was stirring him to do with other people, they responded, let's go do it. Let's go build. Let's go rebuild. Let's do what God wants you to do. And we want to help. The scriptures then state, so they began this work. Looking back, to the year 2005, February 20th, when, when we arrived here, or we, we were working in West Palm, the West Palm Church, and my wife was a secretary. I was a Bible study teacher. And, man, I looked back then, I was like, man, that was the best job ever. All, all I had to do was just give Bible studies. Encourage everybody else to go talk to Pastor Kyle. you got a problem, go talk to Pastor Kyle. He'll pray for you. <laughs> And I just give Bible studies, but that was a great time. But, but God was stirring me to do more. And so I remember 2005, we were still working in West Palm, and we had service at the same time we have service now here. And so we had to have service, Sister Pat, at, what was it, 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. We'd come, we had our little sound system we'd set up in the rec center, and we would, we would set up, and we, we would have church, and then we'd break down, and then we'd go back to West Palm and have night service, and then go to work Monday through Friday. <laughs> Amen. So, but I remember those days, and God called us to Pompano Beach. We started off in Highlands Rec Center, breakdown set up. We were making a major decision concerning the future for God, for what God wanted, what he wanted in the community. And so that was 19 years ago. And, and then we 
we started with Sundays only, and then we started meeting in a house uh, uh, for Bible studies on Tuesday, and then, you know, it kind of just grew on and, and kept growing and until we eventually, you know, we were working for both, and, and, and then eventually we came independent, and we, we left there and went full-time here. But as we see that God was stirring, God had a future. You know, he probably really started about 30 years ago. With the first time you're going to be a pastor. He, he was already putting things into, into order. I just didn't know what his plan was. But we see that God does that in the body. He stirs us and he, and he puts things in our spirit. And, and wherever you're at, you've got to find something to do for the kingdom of God. If God's got greater plans for you, your gift will make room for you. The doors will open and it will become easy. And so we see here that we could either fold as a church or we could open up our hearts and our minds and know that God was moving and there was going to be a new move of the Spirit of God. We knew that there was going to be a change and we knew that our life was going to change. We didn't even know how it was going to play out, but we knew that God was calling us to do something different. Now, I could be totally happy in West Palm giving Bible studies. I could have been totally happy in New Life Tabernacle in Dallas, Texas with a great pastor, great anointed pastor. But God didn't want me to stay there. God had a calling. And so he put things into action. He started stirring things up. And so we knew there was going to be a change. We knew something different was going to happen. We knew that there was going to be a journey and it wasn't going to be easy. How many of you know that living for God isn't always easy? Doing the work for God is not always easy. As a matter of fact, it's more time not easy than it is easy. And so we knew that we would have to give up who we had been, what we were doing, in order to do what God wanted us to do. So Jesus put it this way. This is the scripture that gets me. Verily or truly I tell you a truth. I tell you unless a kernel of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. So you have to die to yourself before you see anything produced. Before you're going to see anything be fruitful, you have to learn to die to self in order that God can multiply your seed. So what was happening in Pompano Beach was unique, um, but it took some willingness from us. It took some willingness from from. The early saints, you know, one thing that I, I really am so glad that God allowed us to do was we never had to rely on the, the mother church. God always sent the people to support the church within the walls of the church. Never needed them to take care of anything. The only thing that they took care of, they paid us because we were working for them. But other than that, they didn't have to buy things for the church. So God had a plan. God was working. Now, here's what I want to I get. You've got to die before you can produce. It, it can't be about you. It's got to be about what God wants. You've got to dig around that fig tree and put some fertilizer on there. And you've got you've got to, to die to see it produce. And so you have to have people who are willing. And we had people who were willing. Thank God, from the beginning, we've always had, haven't we always had music? I, I, now, I'm not going to say it was great in the beginning because everybody was learning. My wife didn't know how to play keyboard. We had another lady who was coming. She couldn't play keyboard, you know. And, and so we, 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 had, we had music. We had a drummer. We had a guitar. We had singers. We never, ever had to play tapes or anything. We, we've always had a, a music team. Thank God. Amen. And we've never had to ask for help. We never had to ask for help from UPC or from the Mother Church. God has always provided. And so, and I know me and my wife probably, there's been moments where I, I, I would question, God, I, I probably would have been more effective staying at a Bible study teacher in West Palm. But that's not what God had planned. 
and I would not have seen some of the things that I have seen if I was just a Bible study teacher in West Palm. I would have never went to Pakistan. I would never went to Guyana. I would never went to uh, Philippines or Japan or, or Central America or South America, Brazil. I would have never seen uh, healings and people filled with the Holy Ghost and, 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 and miracles done. I would have never seen that as a Bible study teacher. So I thank God that he opened up the doors and he used me in different ways. God knows what he's doing. And so we celebrate together because everything that has happened, it, it took people. It took people who were giving, who were praying, who was working, who was coming to church, who was encouraging, all these things. It took all of us. So we celebrate together. But if it dies, it produces many seeds, the Bible says. Together we can, we, we, together we have decided to die in order that others might experience Jesus Christ. That's why we die to ourselves because we want other people to experience what we have experienced. We want people to get baptized in Jesus' name. We want people to repent of their sins. We want people to get filled with the Holy Ghost. We want people to see that God is the answer. So, so we have to die to ourselves so that others can receive this. So as a consequence, together we can look back and now we can see the hand of God who has moved over the last 19 years. And, and River of Life is unique. Every church is unique in its own way. Some might favor and look more alike than others, but we, we have a unique church. We've had people come in, filled with the Holy Ghost. We have people go out. We've had people go to other countries. We've had people start other churches. We've had people who uh, go to other churches and help other churches. So really, God has been working the whole time. God placed you in this church in different points of your time. In the 19 years, we've had people come in at different staggered times. Different, one of you have different gifts and talents and abilities and resources that, that, that we need as a congregation so that we can continue to do what God wants us to do. And so... Some people have come, some people have left, some people come in. It's a constant. God, God knows what he's doing. He brings in people and he takes them out. We have seemed to be, we've had as much as 100 and some, but, but it seems like we continuously stay small and then people go out. But, but what's happening is there's, there's growth in other places, not just here. So that's glory to God. So God has taken some out, planted them. Some has made them missionaries or, or work in other churches. God has given us different abilities according to God's plan for each one of our lives. We've had people who come in for a short period of time and are a blessing to the church. I remember a few times where people have come in. They were here at the right time. They needed a blessing. We needed to bless them, and, and they, they helped us. Can anybody remember just lately when we moved in here, what was his name? What was the guy's name that helped me do all this? Jeff. Jeff. Jeff was in need. He was at a point in his life that he really needed to be around godly people, and God sent him here, and he was a huge help in getting a lot of this set up. So, and then, then he's gone. But God sends people at the right time for the right season to help. And so each one of us have been given a role by God, regardless of our age, our education, our profession, or our economic standing. Whatever, wherever we're at, God can use us. Together, we decided together to believe God, and we decided together that we're going to do the work of God by faith, and we're going to do what God wants us to do together. And so if you look around today, if you look at the people here, I know it's Wednesday night. We don't have as many people on Wednesday nights. But if you look around Today, and you see, a lot of, you see a lot of wonderful people, but you also are missing a lot of wonderful people. We've had some who have passed on to be with the Lord. And immediately I think of Sister Ina. I think of Sister Chance, you know. And there's others, but those two just kind of pop in my mind, right? And then I think about Pastor Morgan, who, you know, he's there. He's doing a great work now. God's using him. And I think about even Brother Jason, our sound guy, for many years, he went up, he moved, and he moved to another area, and he's such a blessing to their church. And so we see that God has had people who have been here, they've passed to be with the Lord, or God's using them somewhere else. 
And so we've had great people, and we have great people. And God's going to bring more great people. Amen? And so through the years, we have uh, had wonderful people who have served, and they've been faithful down through the years. There have been some people who came for a short period of time, and it was about money. Like God used them to give at a time that we needed some money, and God produced it. They may not have done much of anything else, but they gave money, right? And then we had other people who don't give very much, but they are a blessing in some other way. So God puts different people in for different reasons, but we're still part of one body, and we celebrate together. Amen? And so, but if you look around, I mean, think about it. Who has been here that is not here anymore? I mean, if you could... Think of somebody right now, just top of your head. Anybody anybody, anybody else besides somebody I mentioned? Anybody? Sister Lisa, right? Who else? Delman, Brother Delman. Who? Yeah, all right. Son, Cynthia and Guy Fasulo. So we, we, you know, if we, we take time, to th we think of these people who have been here, and God has moved them on to different things. But we're thankful, amen, that God had had them here for a season. And so Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, We see here in Hebrews, Therefore, since we have surrounded, and we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders us, and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance and the, run the race that is marked out before us. And so we need to understand that God has put people around us as great witnesses so that we can continue to run the race and, and get rid of sin in our life and, and, and get rid of things and move forward, persevere in the kingdom of God and do what God has called us to do. We have some people that have been here, brother or Sister Vicki, that are in the nursing home. Brother Vinny. Brother Vinny came sometime in November many years ago, needed a job. Well, he came to church. He got the Holy Ghost, got baptized, hallelujah, and then he got two jobs. Amen. But now he's in the nursing home. And so we, we, we see these people. We got some people. Sister Olive, she's in the hospital right now. So she was a great blessing for so long, but now she's in the hospital. So we have them here, but they're still here. They're just not here. Amen. So continue to pray for them, right? We've seen people go to other cities, other states, other countries, um, doing the, the work of God. And vice versa, we've had some of you come from other churches. Some of you are filled in the Holy Ghost in Jamaica. Thank God he took you from Jamaica and put you here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, so it, it works both ways. We have people who come in that we didn't really do anything. God just sent them because God said, you, you need to be here. I remember Brother Mike, he moved from California. He, he first went to West Palm. Pastor Kyle, Pastor Kyle said, you need to go to Pompano. They need your help down there. And he's been here ever since. Hallelujah. Amen. So we see that God does it both ways. Sometimes they come in, they go out. Sometimes they, they come in somewhere else and they, they come in here. Now let me close with this scripture. God called me the first 24 hours that I received the Holy Ghost and was baptized. It all happened in very fast. And I, and I tell the story often that after I got the Holy Ghost and was baptized and Man, I'm full, and I'm talking in tongues all night, driving around Dallas, Texas in the Honda Accord, and God is speaking to me, and God says, you're going to be a pastor. I mean, it hasn't even been four or five hours. God said, you're going to be a pastor, and I remember picking up one of the tracks or one of the magazines, and it had a wanted pastor in North Carolina, Durham, North Carolina. I said, well, God said I'm going to be a pastor, so I called as I'm calling about the job, the guy's like, oh, great, what's your experience? Well, last night I repented. I got the Holy Ghost, got baptized in Jesus' name, been talking in tongues all night, and God said I'm going to be a pastor. He said, that's great, but we need more experience. But then 13 years after that, it happened, right? And so God calls us and stirs us. We don't always understand the, the process. 
So I wasn't a pastor immediately. I first say a prayer over the offering, be an usher, be a Sunday school teacher, right? Take out the trash, uh, do whatever needs to be done. And it's a learning process, right? And so, so God stirs you early maybe, gives you a vision so that you can stay on track. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 11 through 18. And I can think about the places that I have been that I could have fit there and been happy, Dallas, Lafayette, Indiana, West Palm Beach, but God sent me to Pompano and now Coral Springs. But look at Nehemiah. He views the wall of Jerusalem. In verse 11, so I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And then verse 12, then I rose in the night, and I, and, I, and I took a few men with me, and I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. And so, nor was there any animal with me except the one that I rode. And then verse 13, it went on and says, I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent well and the refuse gate and viewed the walls of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, and then he goes on and says, which were broken down, and its gates, which were, had been burnt down, then I went to the fountain gate, and to the king's pool, but there was no room for the animal under me to pass, so I went up in the night by the valley, and I viewed the wall, and then I turned back and entered into the valley gate, and so returned, and the officials did not know where I had gone. Or what I had done. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, <clears throat> the officials, or any other what I had did and what the work that needed to be done. <clears throat> then said to them, you see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lies waste and the gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem. And watch this, that we may no longer be a reproach. God doesn't want you to be a fig tree who is not producing fruit. He doesn't want you to be a reproach. He wants you to get up and decide, I'm going to work to build the kingdom of God. I'm going to rebuild the building. I'm going to rebuild the church. We build together and we celebrate together. <clears throat> Verse 18. And I told them of the hand of my God which had been good upon me and also the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, well, if God's doing all this, God's speaking to you, God's stirring you, and you got favor with the king to let you go to do something for God, then guess what? We have got to follow, and we got to rise up, and we got to go with you, and we got to go to work, and we need to do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No more excuses. We, we know that God's stirring you. God's doing something. you got the king's approval. God is wanting us to do something, and he wants us to get up and and use our hands, our mouth, whatever gift that he has given you to do the work of God, to rebuild the church, to rebuild the kingdom of God. And I like what they said. Well, let's rise up and let's build together. Then they set their hands to do this good work together in the unity of the faith. We are all many parts of the body of Christ, but we are really one body of Christ. We, 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 we have got to do what God wants you to do. Stop worrying about what you don't get to do and find something to do for the kingdom of God. If you can't give, pray, or work, or do something. So, so let, us, let us, let's keep building. We celebrate 19 years, but God wants us to keep building. It may look different in the next 19 years. 
You may have a new pastor, a younger pastor, more energetic. You might, you might have, they might have more ideals, but God's using them in a different way, and the church might just explode. You know, a lot of big churches started off small. All the big churches went years and years and years running hundreds. And then all of a sudden, God takes someone with a special gift, takes them to the next level, and it explodes. So I don't know what God has in plan, but we got to keep working until God's ready. So let's keep building the church. Some will leave. Some will stay. Some new ones will arrive. And God will have us keep working, moving toward building the kingdom of God. Let's stand. Let us work while we still can. Let us work, and if you can't work, pray. If you can't, listen, if you can't give, pray. Pray for the laborers. Pray that God send somebody, help pastor, make pastor more effective. Say amen. So let's work while we can, and let's pray for the laborers to come. Happy anniversary, anniversary to the River of Life Church. It did not start off as River of Life Church. It was the Tabernacle of Pentecost, a Pompano Beach. And every time I would go and I would have to pay a bill, and they'd say, what's the name of the church? Tabernacle of Pentecost, Pompano Beach. They'd go, uh, uh, how do you spell tabernacle? How do you spell Pentecost? How do you spell Pompano Beach? <laughs> Unless you're in Pompano Beach. So we change it to River of Life because we want God to take control. We want to go deep. We, want, we don't want to be in control. We don't want to go into the water ankle deep or knee deep or waist deep or chest. We want to go all the way and let God, let God take control over the next year and the next year and the next year. Whatever God's will is for the church, we want God's will to be done. We want to be used the way God wants us to be used, and we want to work together, and we want to celebrate together in Jesus' name. Would you lift up your hands and begin to pray, God, right now, Lord, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Lord, stir up that gift in inside of me, O oh God, whatever it is that I can do to be helpful, to be fruitful for the kingdom of God. Lord, if it's to teach the children, if it's to give, if it's to be an intercessor, if it's to be a teacher, if it's to be a preacher, if it, whatever it is, God, stir that gift up inside of us right now, God. Lord, we need every member. We need every part of the body to work together. We need the whole body. We can't just have feet. We can't just have a head. We can't just have have a mouth. We need everything working. We need eyes and ears. We need we need hands. We we need heart. We, we we need everything working together, Lord, to profit, Lord, the church, to profit your kingdom, to profit your glory, O oh God. Lord, stir us up. Lord, speak to us, God. Tell us what to do. Lord, tell us where you want us. Lord, give us opportunity, Lord, to minister in the way that you have called us, O oh God. Lord, stir up that gift inside of us, God. There's some here that God has called you, and God wants you to do more. God wants you to have more faith. God wants you to give more of your time, your talents. Hallelujah. God wants you to step out in faith. He wants you to trust Him all the more. He wants you to get out of the boat. He wants you to walk on the water. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't you trust His voice? Trust His voice. When God speaks, do you know it's God? If God tells us or asks us to do something and we're fearful, it's because of us. It's our, how can we do it? How can God use me? God's saying, just step out of the boat. Listen, you have gifts that you don't even know that are there. When I came into church, I didn't, I didn't know anything. I had no idea God could use me for anything. God gives you the ability. You don't earn it. You don't learn it. God gives you the ability according to your faith and your willingness to be obedient. 
So when you read the Bible and you're reading the stories and you're teaching the stories of the Bible, even if you have never experienced what the Bible is talking about, if you believe it, eventually you're going to see it come to pass. You're going to experience what you have been teaching, what you have been reading. If the apostles did it, if Jesus did it, and it's in the Bible, then that means that we can do it also. We can see blind eyes open. We can have deaf ears open. We can have hearts, uh, holes in the hearts closed. We can have people who are dead raised from the dead. Now, I didn't say they would live forever. Everybody's got to die. But God can resurrect the dead. Lazarus, come forth. He'd been dead for what? Three, four days. And he lived, but he's not living now. So God can, God can resurrect the dead. It doesn't mean they're going to live forever. God can heal somebody. It doesn't mean you're going to be healed forever. You, you understand what I'm saying? There's a time and a season where God does perform miracles and God does heal people and God does call people. And, and things change. There's seasons for everything. And God used Moses, so don't say you're too old. God used little boys, David, Daniel, Jeremiah, Samuel. They were all young when God stirred them and called them. So you can't use the excuse, I'm too young, and you can't use the excuse, you're too old. God used Abraham and Sarah. They were barren. God used them at an old age. God's ways are not our ways. So whatever excuse we have, we've got to say, no, I trust God. I want to do. I want to attempt. I want to try. I want to be obedient to God. Listen, if I'm not, if I'm not producing fruit, God... I need to start digging. I need to start digging. I need to start digging. I need to start fertilizing. I need to start doing something. I need to start figuring out how can I get something to grow. This didn't work. I, it, it hasn't been happening, but now I need to start doing, trying something else. Are you all hearing me? If whatever you're doing is not working, try something else. If you're praying and nothing's happening, try fasting and praying. Ooh. Oh, calm down there, Slick. We haven't had Daniel's fast yet this year, have we? Ooh, you guys are just waiting. That 40-day Daniel's fast. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't feel it yet, but it's coming. Hallelujah. Amen. I do feel a fast coming, though. I feel a fast of no water, I mean, not uh, no food, only water. And I feel a Daniel's fast coming soon, too. Coming soon to your church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. One more time, lift up your hands. Lord, if you can use anything, if you can use any, if you can use a donkey, surely, God, you can use me. God, if you can use old, barren people to produce children, God, you can use me. Lord, if you can use little children, you can surely use me. Lord, if you can use anything, Lord, use me. And when God starts to use you, don't complain about what he's using you for. God, you want me to preach? No, right now I want you to clean the toilets. I want you to take out the trash. I want you to do whatever you can find yourself to do. I want you to teach the young people. Oh, God, but they don't like me. No, it doesn't matter if they like you. I want you to teach them. Hallelujah. Well, what if I don't like them? It doesn't matter you don't like them. You teach my word. Say amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I feel the anointing on this place. After 19 years, God's not done yet. 
God's not done yet. There might have been a season of, of barren, a, a, a dry season, but it's fixing to rain. It's fixing to rain. We're going to see miracles. We're going to see more healings. We're going to see, we're going to see God do miraculous things. People are going to start getting baptized in Jesus' name. People are going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We've got to keep believing. We've got to keep preaching it. We've got to keep teaching it. Hallelujah. We've had people who have watched online who have received the Holy Ghost, who have come to be baptized in Jesus' name. So we believe it, and we're going to keep preaching it, and God's going to keep doing it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. 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 Show yourself friendly toward one another in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Amen. Hit subscribe, like, share in Jesus' name.